I've been saying for a long time that we need to have a 50 state solution, that we can't just continue to cede the ground to Republicans and say, well, that state is there, so there's no point in us competing. Um, we need to be competing everywhere, not just because we have the better ideas, but because our citizens deserve a working democracy. We see what happens when everything is red. Women lose their rights. Doctors move out of the states. Kids are shot in school every day and no one does anything about it. I keep saying we're not voting for the party. We're voting for a vision of America. We're voting for the kind of country we want to live in. And most of us don't want to live in an autocratic nation with the federal government stripping people of their rights. Which is why I want to talk to you about North Dakota. Yes, North Dakota. North Dakota has a population of a little less than 780,000 people. The House is based on population, so because of that, North Dakota has one congressperson. But because of the great compromise that we set up at the nation's founding, North Dakota has two senators. The exact same amount of senators as California, with its 40 million people. So who goes to the Senate from small states like North Dakota is incredibly important because these states get a disproportionate amount of power compared to the rest of the nation in this branch of government. The Senate is grossly weighted for small, rural, often red states, which gives Republicans an outsized amount of power in the deliberative body that is the U.S. Senate. So if we get a chance to flip one of these seats, we have to take it to better represent the overall sentiment in the country. But here's the thing. We can win the Senate seat in North Dakota. No one is paying attention to it. Not 20 years ago, Democrats had a strong foothold in the Midwest. So I don't know where we got the idea that Republicans can't be beaten there because that's just plain wrong. Katrina Christensen has already outpaced her Republican competitor, Kevin Kramer. Kevin Kramer? Is he a senator? Well, yes, he's the senator from North Dakota, a career politician who is nothing but a vote for whatever the party tells him to vote for. He voted to repeal the Affordable Care Act. He will vote against Medicare. He voted against negotiating cheaper drug prices for seniors. He is the co-sponsor of the federal abortion ban. This man has never done anything to help the people of North Dakota, which is probably why only 33% want to keep him in power and 54% want to get rid of him or try something new. Katrina Christensen isn't running as some hard D Democrat, whatever that means, in plus 20 red North Dakota. She's running on who she is and what she will do for the people. Katrina is awesome. She grew up in a teeny tiny town in Nebraska where her dad lost their family farm. So she grew up with the help of federal programs like Head Start and food stamps and the WIC program. So everything the Republicans want to cut actually allowed Katrina to thrive, to become the class valedictorian, to move to Iowa for a college degree, to get a master's and a PhD in agricultural engineering, something that is absolutely crucial to the North Dakotan economy. She is now a professor of engineering at the University of Jamestown, North Dakota. So you got Kevin Kramer running to represent America's billionaire class for the extremist far-right Christian nationalism or whatever Trump stands for, and Katrina Christensen, who is running because she understands the needs of the people of North Dakota and the morals and values of the people of America. Katrina is a vote to protect women's rights, a vote to protect Social Security. She is a vote to protect Medicare and a vote to protect the Affordable Care Act. Kevin Kramer is a vote against all of those things. And please keep in mind, Katrina Christensen's vote in the Senate would count just as much as a California senator's vote or a Massachusetts senator's vote or an Iowa or Minnesota or Nevada or any of the other states we talk about. Kevin only won his seat last time because the Republicans threw nearly $10 million in outside spending into his race and Donald Trump came four times to secure a last minute win. But Donald Trump's not coming this time. He's got other things on his plate. And all that money the Republicans have, it's going to Trump. Laura Trump's not sending money to North Dakota. So if you send money to Katrina Christensen, if we focus on this race that basically costs no money in comparison to all the others, we could win. We could steal this seat right out from under the Republicans' noses. 96% of Katrina's donors are first-time donors. People who are paying attention to government for the very first time. The people love her. They respond to her. She understands North Dakota and the values of the Democratic Party. This is the year we swoop in and show people that these states are not safe red states. They are underrepresented blue. And if we can start to win these states, then we can start to build a coalition that actually represents the American people. No state should be written off. Everybody deserves a chance to be represented when this much is on the line. The Democratic Party might not be focused on these kind of races, but we the people should be. I'll attach a link in my bio below to make it easier to help Katrina out, but this is an under-the-radar winner. Send some money to her and see how far she can go.